You do not have to wait for perfect ideal circumstances to start writing. Because what are perfect ideal circumstances anyway? It's just things that you make up that make you feel that if they happened, if X, Y, and Z occurs, then you have the perfect conditions to write. And what is so overlooked sometimes or really um, forgotten about or uh, not even forgotten about but not even um, acknowledged in the first place is working writers have just as messy lives as everyone else and they have to write anyways. Just the same way that um, you have to do your job no matter what your job is um, despite your messy life. Working writers work within those same uh, circumstances. So if, um, you know, if you're stressed out about something, you still have to work if to do your job. And some people have the job of being a writer. Okay, I think, I think you get what, what I'm saying at this point. But I just think it's overlooked a lot because writing is so glamorized sometimes as um, this, like, separate activity from life and um, it is very solitary work but even if you're a very uh, solitary writer you still have things going on and I'm going to get into this more in an upcoming video but um, you can I'll use the example of even making videos I have other things going on than making videos um, you know that don't that sometimes don't come across or it's not appropriate for them to come across uh, when I uh, make a video or when um, I'm, because I'm focused on a subject. And so when you're focused on a subject, when you're writing as well, you, you put aside what else is going on and you focus on your work. Again, just like any other job. I cannot highlight this enough because writing is just like any other job. I know it's fun. I know it's creative, but you work within the same uh, environment that you would have when you have any other job. So I have proof of this because I have the luxury of um, having most of what I write, uh, you know, dated with publishing dates. And I can look back on because I've written for Copyblogger for over seven years now. Um, and I can look back at things that I've written that I've really liked. Um, and I look at the date and I think, wow, like I know what was going on in my life when I wrote that. I'm like, how did I write that? Because I was stressed out about this. That was going on. Uh, I knew, you know, that was weighing on me. Um, and yet I have this piece of writing that I really like. So again, it just reinforces that you can't really um, accurately say what are ideal or perfect writing circumstances. You just keep writing and you just keep working on what you need to do. And if you're not a professional writer yet, it's the same work ethic that you have to embody on your journey to becoming a professional writer and on your journey to um, you know, writing for work. So I'm always amazed. And also, I write things all the time that I don't like. Just between you and me, I don't like last week's video about self-editing. I really didn't feel good about it. I had enough time to do it. It wasn't like I was scrambling. Um, you know, you can use excuses like, it's hot, it's summer. I was just sort of like, maybe my brain was a little foggy than usual. Um, but I had to publish it anyways because it really does um, everyone a dis disservice if I obsess over things because then it teaches other people <laughs> that you have to obsess over things and not just release them. And y you find the balance of doing your best work or feeling comfortable with, you know what, it, this communicated what I needed to, but I had to let it go. And, and because it's about self-editing and editing is a very popular topic, um, it's getting um, a lot more views than other videos that I've liked a lot more. But again, it's not up to me to judge whether something is good or bad because you could have perfect writing. Uh, this, is, this is an example that I really want to highlight too. You could have perfect 
your perfect writing condition. Nothing else is on your mind. You have no other responsibilities for the day. And you write exactly what you want to write. And then, you know, it doesn't really resonate with your audience at all. And no, no one really cares. You will have that experience as a writer. You will also have the experience where you have your ideal circumstances. Your mind is clear, no stress as you sit down to write. And you don't like anything that's coming out. You're not writing something perfect, even though you have perfect circumstances. Another example, um, and I could go on and on and on about um, when you have these ideal circumstances, it doesn't translate to the perfect thing coming out. Um, and also, I've talked about this before. We're not a great, uh, we're not great judges of our work. Things that I love sometimes are not received well. Sometimes I think I, uh, you know, you've heard me say a lot that I'm very critical of myself, and sometimes I release things that um, I don't like at all. And people find them really helpful. So it's not up to me to say I did something good or I did something bad. It's up to me to feel confident that I communicated what I needed to communicate. And then it's up to the audience to decide whether something is good or bad. The artist is just um, a, my tea is too hot to drink, but I, I reached for it anyways. Um, the artist is just a, uh, a vehicle to communicate something potentially meaningful and then it's up to the audience to uh, determine whether that thing is actually meaningful to them or not and if it's not maybe they're not the right audience for your work um, if someone doesn't like your work they're not your audience you could have thought that you wanted them to like your work but they don't and and oh well so <laughs> the point of me rambling on about um, all these different examples is uh, really just to say or to, sh to, to demonstrate that there's so many factors going on when you're creating art, when you're writing, and that, um, uh, again, going back to what a good job you can do and how you can help your audience, even when circumstances aren't uh, ideal because the flip side of the of those examples that I was uh, or the examples that I just mentioned um, a few seconds ago was think of you know not having perfect circumstances you're stressed out um, you have a lot of other things on your mind it's hot it's humid it's dry all these things that you think just you think are going to disrupt your quality of work. And then you end up producing something that your audience loves and uh, that you love um, over time or that holds up over time that you can go back to over time and say like, hey, that was really good, but I was so stressed out and I was so overwhelmed at that time and uh, my personal life was crazy, but um, I created this piece of writing or this piece of art that actually um, was very uh, helpful for my audience and, and you made you feel like you were doing meaningful work. So it's uh, what ends up happening is not always based on how the, or the surrounding circumstances in which a piece of art, a piece of writing um, are created. So you, you just can't, you just don't know. You just have to uh, you just have to do uh, what you can because the thing that you do have control over is making the time to create that work, not letting that stress and overwhelm prevent you from doing the work that you need to do, or using that stress and that overwhelm as an excuse to not do the work because if you make the time to do the work uh, no matter what else is going on then you're then you're rolling then the possibilities are endless of uh, how uh, great that work can be received or, or maybe it won't and that can be helpful for you too because sometimes when things don't turn out the way that you want them to um, that can be helpful for your growth too, but none of that happens if you don't make the time to do it, which is what I talked about last week. Um, 
in my self-editing video and in my week before that about my discipline creativity video. And those are related to articles that I recently wrote on Copyblogger. And my article this past week for Copyblogger is kind of related to this, maybe the last thing that I just touched on because it was about rejection and how to love rejection. That's actually the title of the article. And I will put that in the description box below along with the other articles that I just mentioned and some other videos because I've talked about um, how we're not great judges of our own work a lot before. So I will link to those below. There's not much more for me to talk about rejection that's in the article. There's nothing for more, like more to elaborate on. I would just say check out that article. Um, but it was related to what I just said too with sometimes when things don't work out and our ideas are not um, received the way that we want them to, it can actually be um, a great part of our growth and evolution and a great opportunity to learn, of course. But we never uh, get to that point if we don't make the time to do the work in the first place. So if you're stressed out, if you're overwhelmed, if you're hot, if your tea is too hot to drink and you really just want to take a sip and it's driving nuts because it is the hundredth thing that just didn't go quite right today because it seems like we're all having days like that uh, recently. <laughs> um, and there I go, I lost my train of thought, but I was listing all these things. And uh, in conclusion, thank you for watching. If you're not already subscribed to the Rose and Cherry channel, I post videos every week so click the red subscribe button below the video tap the notification bell so that you get a note letting you know that there's a new video waiting for you if you like this video if it's what you needed to hear to make the time uh, to start the process of your work that could lead to limitless possibilities in the future give this video a thumbs up i think that's what i was trying to say a second ago when i lost my train of thought um, and yes, I will talk with you soon.